here in front of this lovely park. For the first three months, everything was fantastic. No dogs, nothing. And suddenly, we started finding dog after dog in this park. And we realized that there are quite a few strays in Dallas. And one night, we were sleeping, and we hear this howling directly in front of our house. And it went on for a bit, so my husband went downstairs to see what's going on. There was a basset hound in the driveway. And every time he, Clay reached over to try and get him, he you know, escaped right half a step before we got a leash on him. The next morning, uh, my neighbor called and said, I think one of your dogs is out. So I went outside and there was a little pitiful six pound Shih Tzu laying in the neighbor's yard. He couldn't get up, he couldn't lift his head. He had severe mange, he was dehydrated, and so I pick him up, I take him to the animal hospital, and he stayed for a week. But that same night, again, we're in bed, and that same basset hound comes to howl in our driveway. We came out, and this time the dog let us catch him. We put him in an outdoor kennel, and the dog had the same kind of mange the other dog had. And I firmly believe that he was trying to lead us down the hill to, to help his friend. And as soon as we got his friend, he, he gave up and he said, take me too. overwhelming. People don't realize that in the north part of Texas, uh, Oklahoma, southern Oklahoma, uh, western Louisiana, they euthanize eight or nine hundred thousand dogs. That number is gargantuan. In the Dallas City Shelter at the time when we started our rescue, they could house around 250 dogs. And why rescue groups are a little bit different than the shelter, the shelter is merely a point to house dogs. They feed them, they will give them minimal vaccinations, minimal veter veterinary care, but no training. Without, without all those things, a dog is not completely adoptable. What rescue groups do is they go in, most are foster home-based, foster-based, so that means a dog lives with a family and becomes housebroken, gentle, friendly, good with kids, cats, other dogs, people. So they get the socialization, they get the veterinary care that often the shelters are not able to give them. So they get a comprehensive solution rather than just a place to sleep and food every day. Generally coming out of the shelter or off the street, they're pretty scared, not very well socialized. And so we're lucky to have four really very well behaved dogs. And so we work them in with our pack and they get used to how to behave. And then it's easier to find them home from there. Why do you foster? Because I'm a dog lover. <laughs> I do all I can to save as many as possible. I'd have a thousand if I could afford it. But I have four at home where I keep her. We're pretty maxed out as is, so. The stories that you hear about where the animals are from, how they're found, and that none of these animals are been put into, they're all put into foster homes, and that the people that do this, it just amazes me that people have opened their homes, people have four dogs of their own, and they still foster. So it's just amazing people. This is exactly why we came out here. We saw these guys online. I just get this little like satisfaction that like animals get a new home where people can love them. And there's so many homeless animals all over the world that like even just adopting one can make me feel good about it. Uh,